Hey everyone, it's Strange Michael. I hope you're doing well today. I have a review for you to continue my reviews uh, that I haven't done in like two and a half months. I did some other channel work on some other things. I've gotten lazy on my Goosebumps channel called Michael Goosebumps Fan. <clears throat> in case you're curious about that channel, uh, if you love Goosebumps, great channel to check out, I think. Um, anyway, I wanted to get back to doing videos for this channel, particularly with the Nightmare on Elm Street reviews I haven't finished. <laughs> the last one I left off on was Part 3, The Dream Warriors, which is an excellent film, possibly, probably, the best of the entire franchise. I marathoned these movies about a month ago, and I kind of did videos here and there on other channels about it. However, I never finished up my review series here, so at the end of this review series, I plan on doing a ranking video as well, like I had with Scream and with uh, whatever else I did. <laughs> But anyway, it's also summertime too, so I have some other series I want to start tackling and reviewing. There is one series I entirely rewatched recently because of a new release. We'll talk about that soon too. And then there's some 4K Blu-rays that came out last year that I didn't pick up until recently. I'm planning on getting them all, including the new ones that are coming out this year. You probably already know by me saying that. Anyway, it's a great time to be a horror fan. There's a lot of cool stuff coming out, a lot of new releases I want to catch up on at some point. Anyway, for right now, I have a review for... Uh, another film in this box set. It is the fourth film in the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, one of my favorite, if not my very favorite, horror franchise of all time, tied with Saw as my favorite franchise. This is Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Dream Master. Of course, the title throws me off when it comes to Dream Warriors, Dream Master, and Dream Child. For some reason, those three always get jumbled up in my head, particularly parts four and five. This film was directed by Rennie Harlan, who directed Die Hard 2, which I can't stand. I think it's the worst of the Die Hard films. I haven't seen the newest one, mind you, from a few years back. So, that's my current uh, belief <laughs> of the Die Hard movies. I don't know if I ever talk about that here on this channel. It's technically a thriller, sort of, kind of, but kind of an action film sometimes, particularly in 4 and 5, from what I understand. Anyway, this film came out in 1988, one year after The Dream Warriors. Dream Warriors is a great flick. I love it. It's wonderful. It's so perfect. I would say it's probably the most perfect movie in the entire franchise. And I love a lot of these movies, if not all of these movies. Uh, I have a very nostalgic place in my heart for every single one of these in some way, fashion, or form. And even some films in this franchise, this time around when I watch them, I actually like them more than I liked the last time or the previous times watching them. I'll get to that review in a few uh, chapters down the road. Anyway, <laughs> Dream Warriors over to Dream Master now. I think Dream Master is the most underrated film in this entire franchise. I think it's one of the most underrated just slasher films ever. It's great. It's absolutely great. I think that the real place to start with this is probably picking up as kind of a spoiler from part three's ending. Uh, we have three survivors who survived the end of that movie. Patricia Arquette's character has been re recast. Um, she's somebody else now, who I think is a little bit decent to me. Uh, we also have Joey and Kincaid. Both of those actors came back to play their roles. They're great. I really like both of them, especially Kincaid. And they have new friends, kind of a new friend group, particularly one girl named Alice, who as the film progresses, kind of becomes our main character of the movie. And she has a brother, and she has a dad, and her dad is kind of uptight, you know? Her brother loves karate. They know that their dad loves them, so they try to do things around the house, take care of things, do chores, clean up, cook dinner, stuff like that. They're good kids. I really like those two. Probably some of my favorite characters in the entire franchise, even though the girl playing Alice is so boring. <laughs> She's so, so boring. Uh, it's not entirely her fault. She's back in Part 5, and she's better in Part 5, I think. But she's decent here. She's trying, but she has nothing to work with. I think it's the big problem here. This movie uh, went very much in the direction of being more of a comedy, kind of picking up those notes from Part 3, but I do think there are certain beats in the storytelling that it gets perfectly well, and some it just slightly gets off, just slightly, because of budget restraints, budget cuts, and the Never Sleep Again documentary about the entire Nightmare on Elm Street franchise before the remake. They talk about a lot of the issues with the budget restraints, and there's a lot of understanding to come with that. I think there was a writer strike going on at the same time, too, so you have issues with that. I get it. I get it. I have no problem with that, because what I got here is probably one of my favorite films in the entire franchise. I love Part 4. I think it's so good. Everything about it that could be great is great. There are flaws here and there. Now, how did Freddy return? Of course, Robert England's back playing him once again. He's amazing, as always. He comes back, basically, 
<laughs> a, a dog comes over to his grave in a dream and uh, pisses fire on his dead body's grave and he comes back. I know it's wacky. I know it's weird and bizarre. There's a lot of that kind of wacky and weirdness. Maybe not as much, but there was a lot of that in part three. So people don't really give it the benefit of the doubt. They don't really understand what they're getting into when they go into this movie. And in my opinion, that's kind of unfair. There's so many great things about this film. I like the cast. Everybody but the girl playing Alice are good, in my opinion. I think they all have something they bring to the table. I like each of their distinct physical traits to themselves. Uh, some smoke and whatever. And I mention that to bring up the real point this film did to do something different compared to the previous films or even the future films. And even part five, having, you know, certain characters back after this movie, it kind of doesn't make sense why it's dropped, but I really like it here. This concept makes no sense. Let me be direct on that. This concept makes absolutely no sense. But basically, Alice, being our main protagonist most of this movie, about two-thirds of the film, every time one of her friends die, let's say that one of them smoked, or one of them uh, spoke a certain way, or dressed a certain way, for some reason in this movie, their souls go into Alice every time one of them die, and she knows. And for some reason, unconsciously, she starts to pick up traits of those people. She might start smoking if that person that died smoked. She might start dressing with a leather jacket like one person that might die in this movie. She does certain things a certain way. It's not explained. I don't need it to be explained. It's one of those weird things like the Dream Master and kind of part two with Jesse and the physics around how Freddy comes into the real world and that kind of thing. I don't need it explained. It's just a movie. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make sense. I get the complaints. I get the issues. But does it really move? Does it really ruin the movie for you? In my opinion, no. Uh, I think this film is fantastic. I think it's fun. It's one of my favorites, like I said. Uh, so these little trade pickups make Alice a more interesting character as the movie goes on. I think by the end, I really like her. I think she's really badass by the end of the movie. Uh, and she's cool. I just like her. I like a lot of moments in the film. I think there's a lot of really awesome music in the movie. The soundtrack, not really score. The score in the Nightmare on Elm Street films pretty much always, including Freddy's Dead, is good. Even in the remake, it's good. But man, the soundtrack here, the actual music involved in this movie is fantastic. I love it. Everything from the opening music to just kind of bringing it into certain bands, like, for example, Drama Rama, who I'd never heard of as many times as I've seen this film. I never knew who made this song, but they have a song called Anything Anything, and it's amazing. It's like one of the best 80s songs I've ever heard in my life. I just absolutely love it. It makes this movie, and it's played a couple of times in the movie, and it really just hits and impacts scenes in a way that I really love. And as I said, the movie has a lot of flaws, like Alice, like the concept based around Alice and what happens with her in this movie. But there's a lot of lore based on, like, Freddy that we find out as the movie goes along. There's a lot of cool things that really push into part five that I really like that are kind of kind of explored more thoroughly in part five, which make it a more valuable watch, in my opinion. This movie is so hated, and I don't get it. <laughs> it's one of those things where people hate this, and I know it's a little bit different compared to the previous movies or even the films after it in hindsight, but it's one of those things like Friday the 13th Part 7. I get that it's different. I get that people, for whatever reason, hate that movie, but I love it. I think it has great benefit to the series. I think it adds a great benefit of entertainment value to this. I don't know why, but it does. It works for me. Yes, I love many of these films, if not all of these films, but I just, I love in particular this one. I don't know what it is about it, but it's just wonderfully fun and weird and wild, and it just works. It works so well. Anyway, that's all I really have to say about this movie. I think pretty much the rest of the cast really bring a nice little role here. Robert England, again, this Freddy is going more in a comedic route. This movie's whole tone is more in a comedic route a lot of the time. And I think it works. I think the kills are phenomenal. I think they're just some of the best in the franchise. I think my particular favorite kill is either in this or part five. I'm fairly certain it's in this movie. Uh, I'm fairly certain. I could be wrong, but I'm fairly certain. But I love it. I think it has one of the best cast ensemble in general. I just, I think it is so good. And I hate the fact that people don't like this one. I get that it starts that ball rolling that part three kind of slowly involved about the more comedic route. I know it picks up more on that, but man, I really love it. I think it's, it just it fits so well. And this is my Freddy. This is who I love as Freddy, as the defined character of how he acts and what he does. Uh, and I think it's a really great train going into part five, in my personal opinion. 
uh, even though I think that film is more flawed than this one. Anyway, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4, The Dream Master. Do you guys love it? Do you hate it? Put your thoughts and comments down below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Once again, I watched it in this awesome box set of movies. I'm really glad I did. I, this is one of those ones I think I will watch more frequently for whatever reason. Kind of like the uh, Halloween 6. It's one of those ones I just, for whatever reason, I love that movie so much and I watch it constantly. I don't know why. It just really stands out to me. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Put them down below. If I had to rate this movie on a five-star basis, I would hands down give this a four out of five stars. That might seem way too high. It is not perfect, as I've said many times, but I think it really knows what it is, and it really works because of that. For me personally, just my kind of taste in movies, what I like, the more comedic Nightmare on Elm, Elm, <laughs> excuse me, Nightmare on Elm Street movies, this works for me. And in some ways, personally, not objectively, but personally, I kind of like this more than Dream Warriors, even though I think in my ranking, there's no arguing Dream Warriors is a better made film. Everything works better there than any other film in the franchise. I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be an interesting ranking video to make at some point. So I hope you stick around and check that out after I get the rest of these reviews uploaded at some point. Thank you guys for watching once again. Put all that stuff, that junk I talked about down in the comment section down below. I'd love to see what you guys have to say about this, and I'd love to talk with you about the movie. Anyway, thank you for watching. God bless you guys, and goodbye.